Remove the regulator from the kit bag. Close the kit bag. Lift the tanks to a standing position and straddle the tanks. Do it. Before the test starts, they drill the proper procedure. Everyone must get it right or the entire squad will do it again, no matter how many attempts it takes. Jack up. Basically, it's a pay attention to detail. In the dive world, people die on a daily basis, and that is why it's one of the uh, safety factors we put in. Attention to detail, right equipment, right place, right time. There's no way to be forgiving of not achieving these standards because the ocean won't be. Slowly turn on your air. If you tire out and need a break while you're driving your truck, pull off to the side of the road. If you get tired out in the ocean, you can't take a break. The ocean will drag you back out. The ocean will kill you. I cannot convey to you how important this is and how much more important it will become as this training gets riskier. Does everybody understand the jock-up procedure? Yes, I do. The squad feels they're ready to go. They will now be on a 10-minute clock. Can you do it? Yeah, we can do it, that's it. And your mark, get set, go. All right. That's right. They break into two-man teams and race to gear up. Every hose, buckle, and valve must be in a precise position. She can accurately and successfully form these paths. We'll move on. Time is up. Gentlemen, some of you are demonstrating a very low level of understanding. This is not good. Two men have failed, and they're not even close to time. Drop your mask. This is it. Two of you have a major safety violation. It's something that can result in catastrophic failure of your equipment. You will not make it in this community. You will not survive. You will die doing this if you cannot pay attention to detail. The squad succeeds or fails together. And failure has consequences. We will ramp it up. We do this with stress inoculation. Hands and feet in the air, straight above you. Hands and feet in the air, straight above you. You have to understand the task. First sergeant, go. Eight, KD. Exercise. One, two, three, four. The ability to operate under stress saves lives on the battlefield. The Rangers and Green Berets going through this high-level course know the drill. Nothing out here is done with the intention of smoking the student unnecessarily. Everything is done to make him a better diver. After cranking out flutter kicks with heavy fins, the candidates hit the water for subsurface laps. Enter the water. It's a combination that's hell on the body. If we introduce stress inoculation, it's done to make them a better diver, and so they understand that everything has to be done accurately the first time to ensure their safety. This is risky business that we're getting into, and we have to mitigate risk, and this is how we do it. This is the first level. This is the foundation. You need to maintain your own motivation. Can you do that? Yes, I do. The squad has endured 30 minutes of stress inoculation in the pool, and now it's their second try at Jocko. They have half a minute to finish. 30 seconds. Your mask is up, looking straight. You're out of tension. Close your bags. All right, gentlemen, you've blown the time standard. Get your hands on the steel! Failure number two means another 30 minutes of hell in the pool. This is unacceptable. You will not continue with this training if you cannot do it right on time. One, two, three, one! One, two, three, two! One. Their job is to train us, and our job is to get trained. Stand off! The ocean will chew you up and spit you out. Whenever they're being aggressive, it helps you function better under stress if you're used to living or operating in a stressful environment. You better learn to like it. When this is all said and done, you're still going to be one of the guys on the team, the same guy that went through the same course they did when they were younger. No matter what, there's always that brotherhood. The reason we are doing this tonight is because we have no time for it starting tomorrow. We are going to hit the ground running tomorrow, sprinting. Some of you are not going to know what hit you. You have got to get this sorted. If you can't do it, you will not 
be a combat diver. Do you understand? Yes, I do. It's 3.30 a.m. What do you want to be? Alpha Squad has been at this for almost nine hours. They're on their eighth attempt. We monitor everything. This is how we mitigate risk. We're doing this for you. Let's go. Class zero, three, one, zero. Attention. Eight minutes, 47 seconds, man. Get motivated, man! Yeah! yeah! Holy smokes! It's taken an agonizing nine hours, but the squad finally succeeds. From now on, we're never going to take a step back. This is a foundation. We have to constantly move forward. Do you understand? Yes, yes I do! By the end of day one, the men of Alpha Squad have jocked up their scuba equipment so many times they can probably do it blindfolded. And that's exactly what they have to do next, under extremely stressful conditions. That's the worst thing we've done so far. Day two of Army Special Forces Dive School. The nine remaining members of Alpha Squad are about to face their toughest test yet. This one-man event is designed to simulate what happens to a soldier when he's underwater, in rough seas, in total darkness. It will test his ability to stay calm and fight off panic. The one-man confidence exercise, it consists of several phases. The student enters the water, he's given a blacked out mask, and then the first phase that they go through, Alpha, one. They encounter a surge uh, and surf passage type issues. They might get upside down or spun around. The air source might be swept out of their mouth. The instructors simulate strong surf conditions. The violent motion not only disorients the diver, but it can damage his gear and cut off airflow. Each man must be able to fix his equipment and find his life-saving air source, despite blindness and extreme chaos. He just got surged, and now he's trying to find his air source. There it is. Trace it. Calm. Good. Slowly. Good. Excellent. During the one-man event, if a soldier places his feet on the bottom of the pool at any time, he fails. It's seen as a sign he's planning to push off and surface. The long night spent learning how to jock up and handle their gear is paying off now. But this test is about more than gear. It's about depriving highly stressed divers of oxygen to see how they handle it. The point of one man is to work them up to a, uh, a what we call a near hypoxic state. Carbon dioxide builds up as you're not breathing in, and you're not breathing out carbon dioxide. So that, that's building up and making you what we call air hungry. The second thing you have is you have hypoxia. So all your muscles and tissues in your body are using oxygen, so that oxygen level goes down, while your need to breathe goes up. reach a certain point of hypoxia, it'll speed up heart rate. So your heart is using more oxygen, so it's actually a vicious circle, and the anxiety starts to build. The students reach a point where they are definitely oxygen deprived. The instructor that's administering the exam will continue to remove their air source at increasing speeds to the point that the student is starting to feel a tingling in his fingers. The student is starting to feel a little bit of that, that normal fear, the elevated heart rate, the, you know, the, the, the pounding in his eardrums. I'm out of air. I'm a mammal, I'm underwater, and I have no air source. Natural, normal reflexes, and they're on the verge of, but not quite to, where they would pass out if they continue to push themselves. The nine men of Alpha Squad are oxygen-starved, barely conscious, 
and it's about to get worse. It starts going into more difficult layers of this exam until finally they reach a point where they have what we call an unrecoverable air source. Cameras are not allowed to film this final phase, showing how the air source is disabled would compromise future classes. Right now they're in the most intensive phase of the test, just to determine whether or not uh, they make black? it. You got black? Black. So black means that that student doesn't have an air source right now. So he's fighting to recover it. Captain Smith monitors D'Onofrio as he begins the most dangerous phase of the test. When the body reaches a certain point of hypoxia, they won't be able to function anymore. And you know, at that point, you're getting ready to pass out. Trying to be calm to keep your heart rate down, but your heart starts racing and trying to get breath. You're just trying to fight the urge to breathe. He's dead, Jay. After exhausting every option, D'Onofrio follows procedure. He ditches his gear and uses his sense of touch to try to restore his air source. The men being tested are highly trained special ops soldiers, but deprived of air, every one of them still has to fight the instinct to bolt to the surface. Do you have more consciousness left than you think when you're thinking, oh my God, I'm getting ready to pass out. But uh, we do see people lose consciousness in this course. It happens uh, not infrequently. Uh, we are prepared. Our instructors are right there. Why this is so important is the adversity of the waterborne environment. If you're doing it for the military, you're probably doing it at night, you're probably doing it when it's raining, you're probably doing it when there's surf conditions, you're doing it when nobody else wants to be out there. The test has reached its defining moment. Stay calm, find and fix your air source, or pass out. He might get a little weirded out, which is normal and natural. He's a mammal, he's supposed to be breathing air. But he doesn't lose his mind, he doesn't panic. Surfacing means failure. Staying calm and restoring your air source means success. If you panic underwater, not only are you probably going to die, but you're probably going to kill your buddy, and you're probably going to compromise the mission. You have to learn to calm yourself down. Calm down, let me trace my lines. I know it, oh, I just fixed it. That is the test, because you have to be able to, to reduce the deficiencies under an anxious state. One by one, most find their air source. But one student doesn't make it. Headache surfaces and removes himself from the class. The student just wasn't comfortable down there. And he was just, he was continuing to try to fight through it and, and try to drive on. And as we slowly progressed, he took his mask off and gave me the signal he wanted to come up. He, so it wasn't for him anymore. And uh, so we brought him back to the service safely. You're being relieved from the course because of voluntary withdrawal. Roger that, Chief. He took two weeks out of his life, trained up for, successfully passed the prerequisites, and then got in the pool. And he started working through the stress events up to the one-man confidence swim. Eventually, that soldier just reached the point, though, where he's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm at my limit for today. He's already passed the prerequisites. We know he's got what it takes to get down here, to be in this school, to achieve this. Uh, just not today. Everything's been really grueling. It's not only physical, it's really mental. I'm just trying to take it one day at a time right now, and uh, I'll start working on my stuff tomorrow. Hedick recycles to the next class. He will have eight weeks to train up. The remaining men of Alpha Squad have made it through the one-man event. They will move on. Good job. That's the worst thing we've done so far. The worst feeling ever. <laughs> It does introduce a whole different level of uncomfortability, but this is just another way for me to become more of an asset to the bigger picture later on. There we go. Alpha Squad 310 is done with the pool. Now they will be pushed to extremes in the open ocean.